Okay, what what even is this? I'm Tyler. I'm a nuclear engineer. Let's tear apart some more bad videos. So driving a cargo ship to Area 51. Area 51 is in Nevada, which is landlocked. So good luck getting there in a cargo ship. <laughs> you would never transport nuclear waste like this. There are very strict transportation settings. You're not going to put them all on a, on a container ship. First, you typically wouldn't use container ships as a method of transfer. I've never seen them. I've never heard of instances of them being transferred across the ocean in this great deal of bulk. There's a lot of separation standards as well as, and their markings need to be a bit more specific about what it's exactly carrying. So seeing a bunch of these radioactive symbols on there, no. And I like that the boat's got one at the bottom. <laughs> Because that's one thing that can happen. A lot of waste getting hit by a tsunami. Now, depending on the water, water is actually a really good absorber of dose. So having waste being hit by water, you might actually be okay. Let's see. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, I'd freak out if a wave like that come out of nowhere, but this is... Sea captains are supposed to be trained in these sort of situations. Completely different looking cargo and well the wave went away, but now the cargo is just hopping off into the water. Wow Oh no, no green glowy slime gunk any of that mess. No nuclear waste does not look like that highest level nuclear waste is spent fuel and You'll see it's these little silver things about the size of pistachio. They're clad in zirconium alloy placed in fuel rods and in these large fuel assemblies. That's nuclear fuel. When it's used up, it's placed in these racks within a spent fuel pool for it to cool off, both decay and for its temperature to go down. And then it is placed in these heavy 100, 150 ton containers reinforced with concrete that can withstand direct missile strikes and severe weather. No green glow, no leakage. Though even if it was exposed on the bottom of the ocean floor, it's safe. That's why it's kept in a spent fuel pool. And this is way, way deeper than a spent fuel pool. So it'd actually be okay unless you got right on top of it, bear hug this thing underwater. Really? They devour the, it's not green slime. If they ate these really hot spent fuel assemblies, they could get lethal doses if they were to eat it, but it, it, it's not going to attract them. I mean, it's, it's warm, though you wouldn't feel it very much in something like the ocean. They'll heat up the spent fuel pool to about 100-ish degrees Fahrenheit, but at the bottom of an ocean, no. <laughs> and they're turning into monsters. Kraken and Leviathan, and no, no, it's not going to do that. It, it would just kill them. Yeah, they're hungry. They want to eat it off the cargo ship. Who came up with this? I know, I know it says chat GPT, but someone's just being silly here by giving chat GPT these silly prompts. I like that they're big. I mean, a cargo ship's a big vessel, so they all got really, really big all of a sudden. Okay, here comes the Kraken monsters. At least the weather's cleared up. You can see it's daytime now, and but they got these big radioactive material symbols on the boat, which wouldn't make sense for a cargo ship. It would be associated with cargo, not the actual vessel. You don't see a truck that's carrying radioactive material have a big, obvious nuclear symbol all over it that's not like a hazmat symbol. It's just like part of the boat. <laughs> Whoa, and now we got zombies and a stupefied looking captain. I don't even know what, <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that one. It just, that one just came out of nowhere. Yeah, no, I think I'm done with that. All right, now we got creepiest things at Pripyat and Chernobyl. The Pripyat and Chernobyl, part seven. Dried. Someone made more than seven parts of this? Oh no. Life. In Chernobyl, all things remained where they were left 30 years ago. During the evacuation, people left everything behind. School objects, clothes, furniture, and their hope. 
<laughs> okay, their hope, that's a little melodramatic, but okay, yeah, people did leave stuff behind. Not A lot of people never came back. Some people did, and some people never left, but all right. The radioactive dust still falls on their belongings, just like items in this picture. It's not falling. I mean, there's con there are areas that are still lightly contaminated, nothing nearly as much since the, uh, since the cleanup, the immediate response after the accident, but... Nothing is still actively falling. There's no plumes, there's no sources of dust, there's no radioactive emissions that are currently there. Everything is dried up without a possibility to flourish again. Wildlife and plant life have flourished since then. I mean, I know he's showing old photos, but that's... no, that's not even remotely true. Chernobyl will remain a lifeless place for thousands and thousands of years. No, it was a life... There's plenty of life there. It's not a lifeless place. No, he's acting like it's dried and like isolated, like we're looking at the lunar surface or something like that. No. Only solitude lives there now. All right. I think this is starting to read like one of those <laughs> melodramatic, uh, creepy pastas that I've heard were really popular quite a few years ago. But no, this is this has nothing to do with with reality. Bloody red. Bloody red. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. This is the area around Chernobyl that has become known as the Red Forest because of all the dead trees and plants. See, this image is clearly from shortly after the accident. You see the old Soviet chopper and just... You can, you can tell this is an old photo. This forest is located in the zone of alienation because it received the most significant radiation fallout. So, you, you mean the exclusion zone? Zone of alienation. I mean, that, that could be a translation thing, so I'll, I guess I'll give him that one. Oh, causing trees to burn bright orange and die. Curious what the translation of that is. I mean, I know the radioactive symbol is universal, but I'm not actually sure what, what that translates to. Workers bulldozed and buried the trees. The Red Forest is the most radioactive land area on the planet, and access there is strictly forbidden. It's not. Um, it's not even the most radioactive area in Chernobyl. That would be where the that would be where the infamous elephant's foot is located, still within the reactor building. This area did receive an elevated dose, and that just was the wind just happened to be blowing to that forest during the day of the accident. That's something that's commonly done in uh, during radioactive release uh, scenarios. Is you look at where which direction the wind's blowing, so all of the uh, the radioisotopes, the particulate matter. Particularly longer-lived stuff like cesium-137, which has a half-life of 30 years, is going to sit and accumulate. So you know what areas you need to respond to in order to, say, issue evacuation orders or shelter-in-place orders, depending on the severity, how far it is, what the levels of radioactivity are, that sort of thing. So this would have been, this would have been a targeted area for to implement those sort of uh, protective action recommendations. But... These are all old photos. This isn't what it looks like now. If you're curious what it looks like now, uh, check out my reaction to a uh, Shie. Though I've heard some way it's pronounced Shy. Uh, his journey across the Chernobyl exclusion zone. They went through the Red Forest and it looks nothing like that now. It's ironic that it is called a forest and not a single tree grows there anymore. Not true. Again, please, please check out the other video. And it is quite an actual forest. Now, dose rates are elevated relative to other forests, but it's still... It's still perfectly safe, safe levels of radiation. All right, this next one talks about someone eating uranium. Can't say I recommend that. This man decided to eat radioactive uranium. Whoa, just stuff it all in there. Didn't look like it was very much. This is, this is an older video, so not the best image quality. I mean, with anything we're talking quantity, right? This is just, so just uranium oxide by itself. Its main hazard is alpha particles, which would do the most damage to you if taken internally. Um, you could handle it, you could handle it safely because most of it's not going to penetrate the skin, though I, I would still recommend using proper personal protective equipment and safe handling prop. It says, but it doesn't look like you eat that much. I mean, I wouldn't eat a whole bunch of it. I mean, he's probably not, he's probably gonna be okay, but so you're dealing with two, you're dealing with two hazards here when you're, when you're eating uranium. One, it's a heavy metal, it's toxic. Kind of like eating lead, for instance. You can get poisoned. Um, and the other thing is obviously the radiation, the, the alpha particles. And yeah, if you eat enough of it, it can kill you, just like anything else. But that's, that's the true, I mean, you can get, get a toxic dose from drinking too much water. You drink um, two gallons of water in a very short period of time, um, that'll be the last water you ever drink. It's all 
a matter of quantity even when dealing with something toxic and something that's radioactive. Oh, does he have, he had it in his mouth. Okay, so I put a Geiger counter. He might have, must have put it right in there in order to get some increased readings from Alpha. It didn't look like very much. I couldn't quite read the scale, but you'd also get an increased reading just from putting something inside your mouth because, hey, people are naturally have a little bit of radiation, but that, that's not a surprising result to me. That material that I just ate is... Uh not soluble in body fluid. Uranium is insoluble in water and resistant. He'd pass it out. Yeah, uranium oxide. Resistant to stomach acid, so that ingested uranium would eventually become radioactive poop. Galen Windsor was a radioactive. I mean, sure, because you, you you wouldn't digest it. So yeah, the stool would be radioactive. Now nuclear physicist who designed and operated many nuclear power plants in the U.S. His audacious acts extended to. I like that, that picture. Swimming in reactor cooling pools and even drinking its water for fun. All right, now that's way, now that's way less risky. You could swim at the surface and be completely fine. The water provides excellent shielding and would actually feel like swimming in a hot tub. And you mentioned drinking the water. Um, it's going to be acidic. It's going to have some boric acid in there. But again, we're talking, we're talking about quantity depending. And also, depending on the type, it could be heavy water. If this was in a uh, can-do reactor, um, they would they would use heavy water. So just a little bit, of, which is just denser than what the human body is used to. So again, I wouldn't drink. Do, do not substitute um, spent fuel pool water with regular water as part of your diet. But drinking a bit of it, swimming in a bit of it, probably be fine. In fact, spent fuel pool water, it's very heavily purified you don't want any sort of uh, chemical issues uh, like a accumulation near the fuel assemblies so it there are more dangerous sources of water you can drink out in the wild than spent fuel pool water so those two things i would i would rather um drink a bit of spent fuel pool water or swim in a spent fuel pool than than eat some uranium i'll i'll, I'll tell you that much <laughs> windsor believed that the fear of radiation has been exaggerated it has Oh, it absolutely has. But it's a scary thing that people can't see, so that's why people fear it. By federal energy cartels, so they can re Federal energy cartels. I've never heard it referred to as that. But that's that's really funny. Obtain control of the world's most valuable power resource. Okay, this that he's seeing demolished uh, doesn't look like a nuclear plant at all. Those look like cooling towers clustered from a large multi-unit site, possibly coal or natural gas. Those hyperbolic cool towers, cooling towers, not necessarily associated with nuclear power. The power plant I worked at did not have those. Uh, we just had a really big uh, reservoir. And manipulate electricity prices. Uh, that's, I mean, obvious conspiracy theory here. Sure. He wrote a book and went on extensive lecture. <laughs> the world's safer hypocrisy. Anyone who writes yourself that says you're a world-renowned anything or refers to yourself at that, that's, uh, that's raising all kinds of red flags, but that's just me. Force to raise public awareness. He died in 2008. <laughs> that's funny. Making something look like a nuclear, look like what most people think what nuclear waste looks like. That's that's pretty funny. The age of 82 from a disease you wouldn't guess. I'm telling you what the problem is. Doing something about it, responsibility is yours. This next video shows a couple of girls getting cozy with what looks like some extraction equipment that has a radioactive symbol on it. Well, I can think of at least a couple of things wrong with that. Let's see what he has to say. What are doing is highly dangerous. At a glance, this photo seems completely harmless. Uh, not really. I mean, you got the radioactive material symbol, you got them not wearing proper uh, personal protective equipment, and clearly some sort of work zone. I mean, this is this is clearly something in Chernobyl, but probably should wear some gloves, some hard hats, some safety glasses when interfacing with something like this. And any sort of tool, I mean, this, this thing could, you know, fall on top of them. They could, you know, get injuries from this heavily oxidized, rusty metal. And yeah, even if this thing weren't radioactive, I would not recommend doing what these two are doing right now. But when we go over the backstory as to why this is dangerous, you're going to understand. This is what the control room looked like for the Chernobyl nuclear reactor prior to its accident in 1986. Yeah, I mean, so far this is better than some of these other videos I just looked at. Just a few days later, they experienced a massive nuclear meltdown that sent a ton of radioactive material into the air and surrounding area. K 
Okay, a meltdown sending material into the air. Um, no. Uh, just because you had a meltdown, I mean, meltdown, I know, is the scary nuclear word. It does not mean any sort of radioactive release. Uh, Three Mile Island accident had a meltdown. No radioactive release. Uh, meltdowns were created on purpose in laboratory settings. Actually, no radioactive release. Uh, conditions were perfectly safe. What they had... What they had was explosions and a failure of their, I'm going to say, confinement building since they did not have a true containment building designed to re resist these pressure bursts and explosions. So it wasn't the meltdown that did that. It was explosions that did that. And the melt now, the meltdown didn't actually even cause the explosions. What caused the explosions was they put themselves in a ridiculous test procedure that they, delete, that they defeated their own safety systems per, to perform. They're in an unstable condition. Think of it like they're effectively driving their reactor with hitting the accelerator, no response because they were in a weird spot and they let power sag, but they also cut their brakes and, they, and they're on the accelerator. Car's not moving yet, but you know that it will because what got them in an unstable condition is slowly causing power to raise, then got even more unstable, out of hand. They lost access to their secondary reactor systems, and Chernobyl is infamous for having a positive void coefficient. So, extra steam, steam demand from raising power after the let power sag, it started to rise exponentially in a very short period of time, because of that positive void coefficient that also caused reactor power to rise further. By the time the operators realized what went horribly wrong and the emergency shut down their reactor, well, there's another design flaw they had, which is their control rods are graphite tipped. And graphite is another accelerator. Because graphite actually slows down neutrons in the reactor and slows them down so they can cause more fissions with uranium and further increase power. So they were increasing power four different ways all at once, which caused reactor power to surge. Steam explosion followed by a hydrogen explosion because there was a hydrogen buildup after the core became uncovered and violently ejected material. There was melting too. I mean, their core was destroyed. But a meltdown does not cause a radioactive release. They are not the same thing. That is one misconception. Three Mile Island had core damage, a meltdown, but no one died as a result of that accident because they had a proper containment building. They also, util they also finally utilized their safety systems is another reason why they're, they're okay. That's a whole separate topic as far as why Three Mile Island was nowhere nearly as bad as Chernobyl, but those are a couple of big reasons right there, at least the difference between a meltdown and an explosion. From this tragedy, 31 people directly passed away, but countless others received cancer and passed away from that at a later point in time. Um, not countless. Um, the UN estimate estimates about uh, 50 total. Due to the amount of radioactive material that was being expelled from this area, the government decided that they were going to clean this up. Soon, excavators and other large pieces of industrial machinery started removing these radioactive waste materials. So this picture he's showing right now is not soon. This is actually from 2016 or later. That large hangar structure was not slid over until 2016. This is the structure that they hastily built. Materials and disposing of them. A cover was then built over the accident site and that was that. Even so, years down the line, radiation was still impacting the area. This deformed piglet is a result of radioactive poisoning. No, no, there's no evidence linking piglets, animals, no, no, that this this is completely made up or co or just coincidental. It gets very difficult to fingerprint to fingerprint what was actually responsible for what, especially many years down the line. These two girls are sitting in a highly radioactive excavator claw that was used to dig through the radioactive debris. And yeah, that's still going to be a hot spot. So they're going to get an elevated level of dose relative to the surrounding environment and potentially contaminated, assuming that thing was never actually cleaned up. Hence the sign right there. Be that sign right there doesn't necessarily mean contaminated. That's just a generic radioactive material sign. Because it's been over three decades since the accident, you're likely not going to get radioactive poisoning by sitting in it for a short period of time. 
true, but you still need to have a good radiological briefing and be aware of all the hazards in your area. Just by looking at that and just saying it's been 30 years, I wouldn't trust it. Get it surveyed. And, but prolonged exposure is very bad. Also, portions of dust that come off onto these people's clothes are going to also contain radioactive material. So this is all around just a bad idea. Yeah, that's that's another potential hazard. They'll need to get they'll need to get surveyed with a frisker just to make sure that um, they didn't contain any carry any radioactive material with them. And this one is crushing plutonium rods with a hydraulic press. That's something I'd recommend doing. Hi guys, welcome back to Will It Crush. Today we're going to be crushing some plutonium sent in by Hull's first drill press channel. Go check them out. Huh. Link will be in the description. Also, they'll probably end up being some card up here somewhere. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, what what even is this? So plutonium, this looks like somebody put glow sticks in and stuck a fake radioactive material sticker on there. Here's what plutonium really looks like, by the way. Just like any other piece of metal. If you want to see glowy plutonium, here's what it looks like when it's heated up. No green glowy shenanigans. <laughs> Just breaking glass here. Interestingly, most radioactive materials don't have the little sticker on there. Something like that isn't very strong. You usually put barricades up, postings, when you're entering an area with radioactive material. That's how you caution people. You, don't even just, you just don't even let them in the room for a radiological control there. You don't need to put little bitty stickers on radioactive material. No, no. This is just some little glass canister. This is, these are just little toy glow sticks, man. They're not even trying. The main thing that's dangerous about this is, well, broken glass. He's not even crushing it. It's like going behind it. Not even doing a good job crushing glow sticks. At least try to hold it in place or something. This is lame. Could tell that this was clearly clickbait or something. Probably one of the worst hydraulic press videos I've seen. Usually they at least provide you some indication of how much force it's taking and what's actually going on, but just muffled noises and crushing this not plutonium. I'm, I'm really disappointed in this. And they didn't even crush most of these glow sticks. Oh dude, god, they're gonna have to decontaminate. Decontaminate? I mean, technically, broken glass is a contaminant. That's the only thing you're really decontaminating at this point. No, this lame. And that one was really just boring. <laughs> I appreciate you guys continuing to send to me nuclear videos you want busted. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.